Well, do you recognize this guy? I know I'm commonly as trouble, <laughs> although I am labeled trouble as it's according true. to my bracelet. Yeah, which well, means no, I'd label you trouble <laughs> if anybody asked. Which means we're allowed. We're right? allowed, that's right. So we're here at the Fall Home Show and we are causing trouble. Yes, as much as we can. And this is your phenomenal booth. Yes, it was a space that we put together. It, it, it features a lot of the furniture that Jamie and I have created. Yep. Uh, it's a way for people to understand, you know, what to do with interior design because we do all kinds of different spaces uh, for, you know, from condo spaces, households. Sometimes we'll go in and we'll just say, you know, this is the space and they want to know how to decorate it and how to put it together. So the person that's at home going, oh, I'm tired of the way my place looks. They can call you and you guys come in for a consultation and you tell them what they should do and you listen to them and you talk and you understand what they're looking for. Right. You're that accessible. Because there's me and Jamie and then there's another 10 people at the office, all of whom support that whole team. It's all of those people together. Like it really takes a village to make it happen. For lots of people, you know, they don't know where to start. Yeah, Sometimes with new uh, homeowners, they're, they're just stymied as to what's the thing to start with. So, you know, one of the things that commonly happens is people say, well, you know, I want to paint. I'm like, why do you want to paint? You haven't chosen any of your furniture. You haven't, we don't know what the fabric but is. But that's gonna the first place they, they start, isn't it? They start with yeah. painting, thinking that the painting is going to be gonna the easy. It's going to fix everything. Right. But indeed, it should sort of be the last thing because it is, there are millions of colors of paint, but there are only that many colors of fabric. And once you, you know, decide the direction that, the, that your space is going to go into, wallpaper and fabrics and cushions and window coverings and all that kind of stuff, you can find a paint color to work with that in a second. Going the other way, trying to find a fabric that works with a paint color is way more difficult. But to so them it's easier because they're walking around, they go over another person's home, they go, oh, I love that color. Right. Really, the idea is having somebody help you just means that you make far fewer mistakes. And, and I know that sometimes... And means you save money. You do. So one of the expressions that Jamie and I often use is that if you think it's expensive to hire a professional, wait until you hire an amateur. <laughs> That's really expensive. Because the weird thing is is that doing it, the, the cost of painting a room wrong, just by choosing the wrong color, you'll have paid our fee twice by the time you rebuy the paint and repay the painter to repaint the space. So, perspective. Yeah, it's well worth having a plan. And that really is the whole job of interior design is understanding what the plan is. I mean, and the strange thing is, is that even something like furniture, you're able to sort of say, you know, I want this piece of furniture, but I need it to be a little bit shorter, so it's not quite as long. I need two cushions as opposed to three. I need it one bench cushion. I need it to fit into this space. So we can create things that are specifically for the person and specifically for their space. Now let's touch yeah. upon that, because you do that a lot. Yes. I mean, you talk about, let's just say small spaces. Yeah. Condos are typical of that, or yeah. very small houses, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you go out of your way and say, look, let's maximize the space around those walls right. but honestly you can there's so many opportunities to have built-ins and have, it's cleaner and making, here having somebody customize the built-ins yeah. as opposed to going to a big box store and saying yeah. you know I'll take I'm this I'm going to do thing. it myself right and, and if you're on a really really limited budget and you have to do it yourself mm -hmm. then go for it yeah. but the reality is is that if you if say every time you put in a, a built-in you lose three inches three inches three inches simply because the boxes that are standard for that that particular person uh, doesn't allow you to use the space perfectly over the whole span of the space you may have lost 18 inches of space in three inch three inch three inch increments having that 18 inches back as usable storage makes way more sense and also knowing what to do once you've customized it what are the interiors? What happens on the interiors? There's slide outs. What do you need inside those cabinets in order to make them function as best as they possibly can? And that's can. the key. Think about how many times a day, women probably more, you go in and out of your closet. Right. And you're right. You go and you have piles of sweaters. You have to get that one that's in the middle. As soon as you pull it out, I mean, it's a mess. Closets are an absolute mess, but yeah. they need not be. And no. you always make a point of making that that's another room that should be beautiful. It not only should it be beautiful, but more importantly, functional? it has to be functional yeah. because you may not go and sit in the living room twice a day, but for sure, if you're me, you're in the closet in the morning and at night, yeah. you know, you gotta, you gotta get dressed and, and undressed every day. For women, it may be two or three times right. or maybe four times if you're having a big day and you have more than one event. Being able to access that space in a way that makes you feel good. Ultimately, the thing that people forget, particularly looking at magazines and the whole idea of design, is that they think that their house needs to look like something in a magazine. But really, the house is for you. The building is there to serve you. You should not be there to serve it. The building should be altered to suit you. Whatever it is, the thing that you are passionate about, that's the place that you want to spend some money. If you love movies, then maybe you want to have a media room. We should have our home be a reflection 
of us. Right. I mean, if you were an order in kind of person, why would you have 18 feet of cabinetry and the most expensive possible appliances you could have? <laughs> Makes no sense. Just get enough that's going to be able to heat up what it is that you ordered in and put your money into something that is something yeah. that you are passionate about and that you love. It's well worthwhile to spend the amount of money just to come and have a consultation, okay. just sort of walk through and sort of go, here are some ideas about what you can do. You can do them, you can not do them. Here are some ways that you can make your house better and make it serve you better. Yeah. So the whole process of consultation is a lot about who are you? Exploring. How do you live? Yeah. What kind of family do you have? How often are you here? Do you have pets? You don't have pets? Kids? How does the house get utilized? Mm -hmm. And understanding that tells us how is best to create a house for you. So remind everybody then, how can they reach out to you and Jamie? So they can always uh, online just go to uh, glennandjamie.com or you can go to pelosoalexander.com uh, and find us there, get in touch with us. Somebody will get back to you as quickly as possible and we'll figure out how to make it work for us. And what's amazing is when we refer people over from the realestatetalkshow.ca, so you can go there of course and we'll connect you as well. People are amazed that they uh, pick up the phone. I'll talk to anybody. I yeah. mean, obviously, I'll talk to anybody. <laughs> oh, I kind of opened the door up for that one, didn't I? I love you. You're the best. Thank you.